Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. I hope uh, I'm audible to all of you. Okay, uh, well, I'm uh, Ms. Lili Tishi from the Department of Economics. Uh, I'll be moderating today's session. Well, I welcome you all to the webinar session, which is organized by the Department of Economics on the topic, Impact of COVID-19 Pandemic on Nagaland's Economy. COVID-19 Pandemic, it's not just a health crisis, as it has disrupted the political, social, economic, religious, and financial structure of the entire economy. So to flatten the curve, Nagaland has implemented lockdown on 21st March, due to which most of the economic's activities were stand still, and it has greatly affected the various sections of our economy. So today, our presenters will be sharing their view on how this pandemic has affected our Nagaland, Nagaland's economy. So, uh, Without taking much time, I will introduce you the presenters for today's webinar session. First, we have Sol Tushi, BA Economics, fourth semester. He'll be sharing on how COVID-19 pandemic has affected the agriculture and allied activities. Second, we have Shankoy Konyuk, BA Economics, second semester. He will be sharing about how uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the migration and leads to the displacement of labor. Uh, next, we have Sengjimlo Yuli, BA Economics, second semester. He will be sharing on impact on unemployment. Next, we have Danger from the economics for semester will be sharing on how this COVID-19 pandemic has affected the health and health sectors in Nagaland. Last but not, not the least, we have Holinto A. Chishi, sixth semester. He'll be sharing on how this pandemic has affected the tourism and hospitality industry in Nagaland. We will be taking the question towards the end of the session after all the presenters present their presentation. So without further ado, I'll give time to the first present presenter that is So Tushi. You can take the time if you're here. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, now I will be talking about analysis of COVID-19 pandemic on the Nagaland economy and the road ahead. And the sub topic that I've got is about agriculture. So I'm going to talk about agriculture. Nagaland is predominantly an agrarian economy with 70% of its total population dependent on agriculture. Agriculture accounts a significant share in Nagaland's economy. It contributed 27.47% to the state's total GSTB that is cross that domestic product during 2018-19. However, due to this lockdown, Nagaland's revenue have, has been severely affected. So the Nagaland government now focuses on agriculture to revive its economy. <laughs> The government led by CM is looking forward to become self-reliant in terms of agricultural production and to reduce its dependence on Sundar and Stead. And this COVID-19 outbreak has given us a lesson that we should take farming more seriously. Nagaland has got 16,000 16, square kilometer of fertile hills and uh, you know, favorable climatic condition. So we have got enough land to cultivate that we don't have to depend on other stats for agricultural production. 
And as we all know that all other sectors are seized or held at this moment, and uh, we know many migrant workers, those who were working outside of our states, they have returned back to Nagaland. So when they were working outside our states, of course they were earning there and they were spending there. However, they contribute a little share in our economy. But now due to this pandemic, they have returned back to Nagaland and this all small, small factors, these are affecting our economy. And we also know that in Nagaland, we don't have industries. So now in this situation, agriculture is the only way to revive our economy. The Nagaland government, which is facing a financial crunch in the wake of lockdown, has focused on strengthening the, strengthening the agriculture and allied sector to revive the state's economy. And government has been trying very hard to revive our economy in many ways. And let me read out some examples. BJB Kisan Murja of Nagaland launched curry crop seeds distribution among the farmers at its office premises on 28 May 2020. The seeds mostly of eggplant, bitter corn, pumpkin, chili, and okra is distributed all over the state self reliant Sir Tamjan Imna Along, BJP President and Minister of Higher and Technical Education and Tribal Affairs, he challenged the people to go back to the soil, adding that the state should not be always at the backstage of performance in agri and allied sectors. <laughs> Get back into endeavor of integrated farming. As stated by Sir Tamjan Imna Along, if you want to eat pork, let us rear our own pigs. If you want to eat chicken, let us rear our own chicken. And to be healthy, we need good vegetables. So let us all, let us grow our own vegetables and let us be self-sufficient. Nagaling government also developed 1,500 hectares of coffee plantation during lockdown. In conclusion, I would like to say that our economy is in depression, so you and I should contribute by giving more importance towards agriculture. The government, is, the government is also working very hard to uplift our economy, but I must say it should also come up with more schemes in agricultural sectors so that our economy will be recovered again. Amid COVID-19 uh, crisis and lockdown restrictions, agriculture is the best weapon to stand against hunger and poverty. So let us all work together in farming and grow our own vegetables to build stronger and more vibrant Nagaland. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. We will take the questions later. Uh, Shan Kui, you may take your time. Please, uh, presenters, please take the time one after another. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, your voice is not audible, Shankoy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Shankoy. Uh, my question is a of the
Yes, I think uh, there's a problem with your connectivity. Uh, we cannot hear you. So, um, you can switch, turn off your uh, video and we will uh, proceed with another presenters. We'll have you at the end of the session. Okay. We cannot hear you now. Yes, okay. Okay, uh, there seems to be connected problem. Sorry for that. We to the next uh second semester. Please take your time. Good afternoon everyone. I hope my voice is audible. Well, my name is Sinjim Longwili and I will be focusing on the topic of unemployment. Under this I will be talking on how this present pandemic is leading to the rise of unemployment and how our state economy is being affected because of unemployment. Also, I will be highlighting on the importance of economy. And lastly, I will be citing some few measures to overcome the present crisis. But before that, I will give a brief introduction on the unemployment rate in Nagaland. Well, Nagaland has the highest unemployment rate among the state at 21.4 percent with a population of only 20.63 lakhs. 30 percent of Nagaland population is comprised of youth. Out of these, 78,367 youngsters are unemployed at an alarming rate of 8.5 percent. Numerous determining factors contribute to the growth of unemployment, but in a set, but today, uh, I will be focusing specifically on the cause of unemployment due to this present pandemic. So, unemployment is defined as a situation in which someone of working age is not able to get a job but would like to in a full time unemployment. Well, there are two sectors where people can get employed they are formal sector and informal sector. Formal sector includes people working in civil services, public sector units government service, school colleges, banks, etc. And informal sector includes people working as small farmers, street vendors, hawkers, cobblers, laborers, artisans, rag pickers, etc. So now coming to the main points. We see that after the coronavirus outbreak, there has been an increase in unemployment and the economy of the state has come to a standstill as consumer spending are likely dropping because people choose to stay at home or are ordered to do so and avoid public activities such as traveling, shopping, eating out, etc. And also businesses too are likely suspended or reduced operation both to help the spread of the virus infection and due to declining demand. Uh, and as such, we see a rise of unemployment both from formal and informal sector. Now, taking some few examples from informal sectors like the street vendor, they are also uh, facing a lot of difficulties to meet their daily necessities ever since this lockdown started because they are in no position to go from one place to another to sell their goods or say to advertise their product and also some of them prefer to choose to stay at home for safety and some vendors uh, have moved back to their hometowns or states and not only this but also the markets uh, are open at uh, for a specific time that is from 9 a.m to 12 p.m which is uh, resulting to a less number of profit so people are either uh, the vendors are either uh, earning less profit or are unemployed due to this pandemic. Again, uh, taking the example of people working in construction sites, example like bridge, uh, roads, building, etc., has also lost their jobs as most of the constructions are put at risk due, uh, due to this pandemic and as such, half of the laborers had to move back to their safe 
and for the food, shelter, and safety. Because when there is no work, there is no money, and thus leading to unemployment. Uh, there are also some few people who run it through garbage bins to pick out the wrecks for the livelihood. So we can imagine that because of this uh, lockdown or say because of this pandemic, they are in no position to carry out their job as such, leaving them unemployed because they are not earning anything uh, during this pandemic. Now, formal sector, uh, the best example we can take from formal sector is educate, is school and colleges, because education in every sense is one of the fundamental factors for economic development. No country or state can achieve sustainable development without making substantial investment in human resources, because education enriches people's understanding of themselves and of the world. But again, because of this current pandemic, we witness a huge gap in education as the state is predominantly ruler with 82.26% of the population living in rural areas. Most students cannot get access to e-learning because of poor connectivity of network. And also, not all schools and colleges in Nagaland facilitate e-learning, thus making education more challenging. And as such, it is believed that if this pandemic continues for a longer period, there might be a potential for increased dropout rates, which will proportionately affect the economy. Now, how unemployment affects the state economy is because when a high level of unemployment exists locally or nationally, economic growth suffers because consumers save more money and devote less to spending outside of the bare minimum, such as food, health, and servicing debts, which disadvantage other business who depends on consumer sales to stay open and pay vendors. Not only this, but unemployment also lower GDP for the economy, affects political instability, creates social problems, increases poverty, and losses human resources. Which is why the economy of a state is important for many areas of society because it can help improve living standards and make society a better place or it can also make things worse. It also controls production, distribution, consumption, and consumption of commodities. Economic development, if done effectively, works to retain and grow jobs and investment within a community. So basically, when the economy is down, it could mean you will earn less money. When people are out of work or earning less money, they may not be able to pay their bills. This can cause people to go into debt or even lose assets such as house or girls. As people and business stop spending as much, the stock market may also have losses. Now, coming to the end, here are some measures that a government can take to overcome the present crisis. Point one, great awareness among the existing schemes, loans, grants, aid, and programs for youth employment, and also increase job opportunities for the youth. Point two, eradicate illiteracy by compulsory education system for every citizen, and also providing skills for various jobs options to eradicate employment. Point three, lower interest rates, reduce the cost of borrowing and increase consumer spending and investment. Point four, rescheduling bank loan, repayment cycles for self-help groups and individual agricultural debtors, direct financial assistance to self-employed workers, small business, house and young startups entrepreneurs. The government can also do so by strengthening health system financially, and that is, Strong financial supporting for health systems to ensure that health workers are paid their salaries and health facilities have the reliable funding and need to purchase essential medical supplies. Uh, the removal of financial barriers to provide free testing and care for coronavirus patients regardless of insurance. Because high GFTP cannot solely measure the growth of the state, the quality of jobs, livelihood, and overall development matters for 
economic growth and development. So in conclusion, I would like to say that the state needs to take a serious look at the present scenario and think of serious remedial measures to meet the mammoth problem of unemployment. That's all. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Sanjilo, for sharing us the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on unemployment and also uh, sharing us the measures to solve this uh, problem. Okay, next we have Denja Pom, BA fourth semester. Yes, Denja, you can take the time. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? No, audible. Yes, you are. You can proceed. Okay, uh, respected all the faculties and all my dear colleagues, today I will be speaking on the topic impact of COVID-19 pandemic on health in Nagaland. Uh, since we have limited time, I will be in particular focusing on the health status of Nagaland to the COVID-19. Okay, uh, before I start, let me give a few introductions about health. As we all know, health means the state of being free from illness or injury. Better health is central to human happiness and well-being. It also makes an important contribution to the economic progress as healthy population live longer and are more productive. Now, coming to the point, before the emergence of the COVID-19 into the state, it was alertness and awareness. However, with the coming of the more people or more strengthened people into the state, the maintenance of our the maintenance of, of, of our health has become excessively important. Because of which the government and other several NGOs are enforcing several guidelines into our everyday activities, like movement of vehicles into odd and even number, and we are wearing of masks has become compulsory and keeping social distancing. And even without the involvement of the government different organization like churches, councils in village or towns are taking initiative to contain the spread of the virus. All, all such, such things are done in order for the safety of our society. Uh, till today, as per the data released by the Health and Welfare Department, the reported cases in our state stands at 622, out of which the total active cases are 391 and 231 have so far recovered. Thus, it is clear that the positive cases in our state are increasing day by day. However, it can be said that the number of recoveries tend to surpass the number of the active cases. Even while most of the advanced countries across the world are fighting to contain the spread of this deadly virus, our state is considered fortunate because most of the infected patient falls under the category of asymptomatic, means that the patient do not exhibit any symptoms of the disease. According to the expert, the most important factors to the high recovery rate in our state are age, healthy immune system, geographic and environmental factors. Dr. Atso Karutso, who is treating COVID-19 patients at COVID-19 hospital in District Hospital, Koima, said that the most important factor to the high recovery rate in this state is because most of the infected patient falls under the category of middle, middle age, that is at the age of 17 to 44 years at the age where a person has a strong immune system. And he also added that the patient do not have any other associated infectious except COVID-19. Thus, it is clear that the new coronavirus has affected people health in more than one. With rise in positive cases each day, people are facing stress, anxiety, and worry for different reasons. The frontline workers are the most stressed out. 
contained compared to those people at home because they are exposed to most challenging occupational deaths like violence, distress, death, and all those negative public city comments. Just in conclusion, I would like to say that this pandemic has affected people emotionally, physically, or mentally in some way or another. Thus, however, it is never too late to bring a change by educating people or by creating awareness and by following the protocols and guidelines issued by the government and other civil organizations for the safety of our state. Thank you. Uh, the, thank you, Dencha, for your presentation. Yes, as you have said, a healthy citizen will make a strong economy. For the economic activities, it's very essential to for a country to have a strong human resources. So thank you for your presentation. Okay, uh, next we have Halunto Echishi. BA Economics fifth semester. Polinto, you can take your time. <clears throat> Hello, good, good afternoon to you all. Uh, the topic of my presentation will be on tourism and the hospita hospitality industry and how this COVID-19 pandemic has affected our Nagaland economy. Now, before we can uh, proceed into our main topic, we will I will just highlight the few meanings of tourism and hospitality. So tourism, tourism is nothing but the movement of people from their normal places of residence to the another to another place for a minimum of 24 hours and maximum of six months for the purpose of leisure, pleasure or, or business activities. Now, what is hospitality industries? Hospitality industries is a group of business that provides services to the customers uh, example, lodging, fooding, beverages, uh, yes, sports, health, travel, travel, arts, culture, etc. Now, uh, let us go in do, deep into tourism depart, uh, the scope of tourism. So, tourism is one of the ever growing market. Tourism, uh, tourism in India has a very large market and it offers up to so up to 247 billion us dollars contribution of gdp now uh india ranks at the seventh position uh, within the territorial boundaries of asia so india is in seventh position and since it uh, my topic is regarding nagaland i will confine my <clears throat> Uh, my presentation within Nagaland itself. So, Nagaland, uh, Nagaland has a wide variety of tourist places, uh, mainly Kohima, Dimapur, uh, Mokokchung, Mon, etc. So, Nagaland does not, uh, doesn't lack in a tourist, tourism department. It has a wide variety of options, but Nagaland is very famous for Hornbill Festival, so I will confine my topic within Hornbill itself, uh, citing as an example. See, uh, uh, according to my research and that data analysis, I, uh, I have found that more than 1.5 lakhs, uh, 5 lakh people visits Nagaland uh, for tourism, uh, for tourism. Uh, so Nagaland uh, Nagaland is also quite famous for Hornbill Festival, so th that is one of the major contribution uh, of tourism. So, uh, okay. <clears throat> so more than 1.5 lakhs people visit Nagaland for this festival, it is, uh, and it is also ever growing. Uh, since 2016 to 19, there has been an increase in the tourism. So that's a very good news for Nagaland. Unfortunately, due to the impact of COVID-19, such, uh, such things have been affected. 
Now, now, with that, I would like to set with an uh, with an example. Now, when when people travel, there are two types of destination. The first one is the primary destination, and the second one is the secondary destination. So, primary destination I mean, is the place where you actually want to visit, and the secondary destination is the place uh, that you visit before uh, you actually reach the primary destination. So, even within these two primary destination and the secondary destination, uh, people, you know, businesses and other allied tourism activities can be done. So, with the effect of this pandemic, uh, yeah, with the effect of this pandemic, uh, we are Narlen, not only Narlen, but all over the world, the tourism and hospitality department has been struck. <clears throat> now, this is according to my opinion, but uh, then I believe that tourism and hospitality department is the most affected area in economy because tourism and hospitality runs solely on the visit visit uh, visit of people from uh, domestic visits and the visits from abroad. So, to, according to according to my findings, I found out that tourism and hospitality hospitality department is one of the most affected uh, area in this in the economy. So, with this, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you, Holinto, for sharing us how the lockdown has affected the tourism and hospitality industry in Naglin. Okay, uh, next uh, we have Sankoy Konyak. Sankoy, if uh, you are ready, you can take your time. Hello, is my voice audible? Hello. Yes, uh, it's audible. Okay. All right. Sorry for the script that I've got before, but now let's carry on without wasting time. Uh, I'll be emphasizing on the subtopics called migration and displacement of labor and how it has infected the human resource and the economy. Generally, when we talk about COVID-19, it has infected almost every part of the world. India, the second most populated country, has still few cases regarding COVID-19 comparing to US and Europe. However, its economy has been contracting rapidly in past five weeks, and many still remain infected with only few recovering from it. The impact of in India has been disruptive and has proven to be a drastic loss for the economy. On 24th of March 2020, when government ordered full national lockdown, many factories and so to say companies have been shut down. And my Mike had loss of income and uncertainty about the future. Following this, many of them and their families went home. Then we came back In response, Corman has taken some measures and arranged transport for them later. <clears throat> Many of the migrants have also died due to the lockdown, with reasons ranging from starvation, suicide, exhaustion, and denial of medical care. Now, we have no reliable account of the number of people who are malnourished, hungry, at different states, with no ration card to even the food aid by the government. Now, when the Naglain, the situation is going in and around, the people of Naglain has not faced much troubles with COVID-19, bringing to their states like Maharashtra, Gujarat, etc. But economy is saving resources. Most of the uh, are this 
There are a large number of migrated returning people directly leading to short uh, limited resources and um, which would supply a large number of population for, and for which there is an inflation in the marketing price system. The announcements of lockdown have also infected some wagers like construction workers and transporters, which include auto drivers and so on. And since most of them uh, were migrated from other states, with the announcements of the lockdown and displacements of labor in that lane, those outsiders have flee back to their lane directly, which have severely affected the uh, economic growth of the NAG lane. This could also be considered as the sole reason for economic decline in NAG lane. Moreover, some expenses have also been made by the poor men for migrants by allotting them at some places, buildings, and some institutes. According to the recent uh, news from different districts, there are hundreds and thousands of migrants, televisors in every district with no jobs and simply just possibly trying to survive with whatever they have, with some savings, but which would possibly fit themselves for a week or two at the most. So in order to overcome such pandemic situation, government have taken various steps. In with recent observation in the Mabur district, shops have been permitted to function with fixed timing set by the government, along with full precaution. The government have also provided food aid to the people, which could be assessed with Russian card. Along with it, the government have also decided not to clear fairness allowance and fairness relief to the state government servants up to January 2021. Thus, we can say that there will be a truly grueling days ahead for the people to recover such recessions, and such recessions could only be recovered when everything comes back to normal situations, uh, along with government's initiative and coordination with certain leaders. Only then, we may properly see a sign of steady recovery um, in and around three to four years. And as Nagaland being a part of India, there might be a side-by-side -side recovery when India as a whole recovers steadily. With this, I like the one. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Shant Koy Konyak, for sharing your view on how this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, led to the migration and displacement of uh, labor and explaining us how the government has taken various uh, strategy to tackle this current crisis. Okay, uh, now we will have the Q&A session. So if there is any question, uh, you can ask now. You can also uh, put your question in the chat box or, or you can unmute your mic and ask the questions to the presenters. Uh, okay, uh, if there is no, okay, uh, if there is no uh, question, we'll wrap up the session. Okay, uh, thank you all the presenters for sharing your perspective on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on Nagaland's economy. And also, uh, I hope that our economy will revive again. The unlock process has already begun and hopefully by next year, our economy will be back on track. Thank you everyone for joining us to the session. It was lovely having the session together. Thank you. <laughs>